when you're working with surgery recoveries for your infant, your baby, your toddler. It's one of my specialties, partially because it's it's my life with my son. He just had his 29th surgery. Um, when children are going through this kind of work, uh, they're really neglected. Um, and I'm gonna do a, a, a really big shout out to the medical community. If I have surgery, right? I get a PT evaluation, I get an OT evaluation, you know, I might get drugs, I might get a, a follow-up MRI. With the munchkins, oh, they're good, bye, see ya, you know, let, let me let me know, you know, I love when they say too, um, if they're bleeding too much, bring them back, and I'm like, um, this is too much, can we stay? <laughs> oh, oh no, this is nothing, you'll, you'll know, how, how am I gonna know? How am I, what, you know, was my kid gonna hemorrhage all over the floor? What, how am I gonna know? There's, and again, sorry, the mom side of me is coming out. I, I do movement lesson, but I'm, I'm still a mom that, that's gone through it. You have to look at the type of surgery, right? Most people think of surgery to, to repair, right? When, when you have something like a cancer or tumor um, uh, that goes on or an infection, so you have to look at it for fluid dynamics. Infants are very sensitive to fluid dynamics. This is why they have very runny mucus, right? As they move around and do tummy time and so forth, their nasal mucus and so forth goes around sort of just like, like you're like looking at fine wine um, and looking at the legs as they call it um, to see the sugar contents and stuff and how that the wine sticks. That's very much how mucus works. Everyone thinks that the vestibular system comes from the inner ear. For us, if it gets damaged, we can have vestibular issues, but for babies, it's not how they develop a vestibular system. It really is done at a cellular level, but the, the mucus rate has a lot to do with it. This is why they drool, right? They have a very thin mucus. This is why I don't drool, because I don't have. Now, I have, if I have vestibular interruption, you'll see me drool, right? And that's how it's one of the clear indicated that a vestibular system hasn't been, it been uh, established. So you have to look at the deviations of where, where the child is with drool. Um, yes, they teeth and they go through that, but as the mucus thickens. Now, one of the biggest problems is with now again infection, tumors, and cancer. Now, I put tumors and cancer separately because then I'm going to explain that because cancer is a mass. So, infection thickens the mucus, right? And so it changes the, the viscosity rate, the movement, the fluid dynamics in a baby instantly. I don't care, it could be a minor ear infection, but when you start looking at like what I've gone through, which is mophilus influenza and preceptal and, you know, meningitis and those kind of things, sepsis, right? You're going from, from a, a really good midline processing to literally like a, like this system is just heavy and all the movements are slow. It changes the, the input within the muscles, the skeletal system, everything, the circulatory system, everything. When you're looking at a tumor, a tumor now is, is not as aggressive and a tumor is still more biological, meaning that it don't still oppose gravity, right? It, it's still there, so, so you have that and some tumors can be removed and some can't. Um, and, and, but if they're benign, they respond a bit differently. They still have a buoyancy. Um, they don't affect it. Now, cancer is different. Cancer is very heavy. It doesn't have rotation, all right? It is a mass. It's almost like having a baseball in your body, right? And that's where I can feel, when I touch people, I can feel that if they've had an infection or they currently have an infection or if they have cancer. People think I'm a voodoo doctor sometimes when I'm actually working with them because I'm like, doctor, like, do we need to... And uh, they're like, how do you know all this? My touch, like it, to me, it's like, my touch is so sensitive and so sophisticated. You know, like in California, when we say, duh, you know, like my, my touch is there. And, and that's the part that's probably the hardest thing to teach because I trust my, my touch way more than I trust my vision, what you're telling me, um, what you think I need to know. It, my, my hands don't lie, you know, and when I'm on you, you, you know, they're, they're telling me a story. You know, when someone's saying, I just can't get rid of the pain in my spine. Well, you know what I mean? Like the cancer's gone into it. It's just, and I've worked with severe um, people, probably the most severe cancer I've worked on. The gentleman passed, he was 84. Um, not that that matters, but he he'd had melatonin in the lungs and, and the tumor actually went through the rib cage. Um, and uh, he passed four days after I worked on him, but he was like calm breathing so much better. Like he just, he just became at peace. So... When you're working with a child, now in your case, if you do the newborn movement assessment, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
due to the surgical procedures, maybe intubation, maybe the cancer itself and so forth, but we have pretty good midline interruption. You can see that in sitting. This is where I ask for more videos. You can see it with climbing the stairs and that's why you're getting the, the asymmetrical crawl, that the chest is not able to cross midline. Now, I would know more if there was pick lines and so forth, like the, the medical information, but right now your first touch, and this is more, I wouldn't say it's more advanced, but more empathetic, um, for, for lack of a better word. So, so if you're watching with my doll here, right? So when, when I start working with, with a child, um, you know, I, I, I get to this. I get to like micro movements and, and literally here, and I'm just going on and just feeling that you can do this while they're sleeping as well. Um, you can do it in sitting. I'm just giving some examples of this, but you're, you're going to to see where, where again, I'm looking for that weight transfer. I'm looking for that midline crossing and I'm looking for, again, weight transfer this way as well as this way. Um, and just evaluating, coming back to the knees, over to the hands and, and so on. Because what you have to realize is that if a baby finds something difficult or it hurts them, it's the same vocabulary, they will avoid it. So let's say right after surgery, it, because of pick lines or whatever, and, you know, and they go to look to the right, even in this position, and they can't because they have an IV or they have a pulse ox lead or whatever, they'll just stop doing it. And that's what you're looking for is to reinitiate. You have to see if they can initiate it, you have to stimulate it, and then you have to enhance it. But if you allow a child to have post-operative movements on their own with no influence for optimal development, they will be deviating from, from the second they get out of surgery. Um, and this is with anybody, really. really. Uh, you know, we, we just don't wanna be in pain. Um, and, and that's where you're gonna be here. So you can see in sitting um, where again, she's, and I'm, I'm switching sides for camera, where she's just sort of off. But what she should be doing is, is the hand should be down and she should be crossing midline. And you're not seeing that. You're seeing more of a left, left, right, right. So the midline deviation is really coming through here. Um, I really would get into the worried parent support group uh, and, and go through that route and, and, and so that you're working on, on all of those kind of movements. Um, surgery takes away rotation. Surgery takes away midline. And you're also dealing with the cancer. The cancer gets real quick and heavy in the system. Cancer doesn't like to share with other cells. Um, it's a very um, antagonistic kind of uh, situation into the body. The cancer is gone and you go, yay, but the movement vocabulary because of the cancer is still even dominant in the system, especially if we're doing chemo. Chemo is a really heavy drug. Um, it, it needs to be done. I'm not saying don't do it, but you'll see uh, if you're doing chemo and that I need to know because then we need to do some serious cranial work because the chemo, chemo like sugar is a man-made neuropathy, right? So, so we, say these are the fine capillaries and the drug goes in and stops it. And then these capillaries, these movements are dead to the brain. <clears throat> so I literally have to go in and say no more sugar, no more chemo and bring it out and bring back those movements. Uh, they, the chemo goes into the cranial sutures. All the sutures are needed to move for developmental movements. And when they get stuck or jammed, that's also where you have an issue. It also could be due to infection. Other medications can do it, but it makes the system also very heavy. Thanks.